Good morning, brothers and sisters. Father Ron here for Breaking Open the Word this Sunday, and it comes from the 10th chapter of Mark, verses 46 to 52. And this is what it says. Bartimaeus, a blind man, upon hearing Jesus in town, cried out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many people rebuked Bartimaeus, telling him to be silent and pushed him down. But Bartimaeus kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. And he threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus, who said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. And Jesus told him, Go your way, your faith has saved you. And immediately Bartimaeus received his sight and followed him on the way. A great gospel. Oh my, so much to unpack. <laughs> Truth be told, this is probably one of my favorite pieces of Scripture. And I want to make two points, brothers and sisters, just two points that I think this gospel is reminding us. The first is about persistence and fortitude. So, the reason Bartimaeus' life completely changed and he received the miracle that changed his life and brought light to his darkness is because of one reason. His absolute conviction that Jesus could change his life and bring him healing. And he refused to let anyone or anything move him from that belief and his encounter with the Lord. So we heard in this gospel today, the scripture, it says, you know, when, when Bartimaeus called out for Jesus, the crowd pushed him down and said, be quiet. Jesus doesn't want to talk to you, a blind man. And they told him to be silent. But that didn't stop him. It says in the scripture, you just heard it, Bartimaeus just called out all the louder for Jesus. He didn't give in to despair or defeat. He just knew. He just, well, he just believed in the deepest part of him that Jesus truly cares and would bless his life if only he could get his attention. Oh, what faith, what belief. And there's a powerful lesson in there teaching us one thing, not to give up. When we call out and when we get pushed down, to get back up and to call out all the louder. No matter how long it's been that we might have pursued and lifted a prayer to God, as Bartimaeus himself surely did, we can't give up even though it seems at times it's not answered. Not to give in to temptation or doubts or thoughts or people who tell us, oh, look at you, do you really still believe there's God? Do you really believe prayer works when you've been praying and nothing? Because we know from this story and so many others in Scripture that God will always reward those who pursue him. Some lady at the recent parish mission I had talked to me about her frustration in prayer and God. And for the longest time, she said, she's been praying for something, asking God's intercession in her life, but nothing, no response, she said. For over a year and a half, I've been praying for this, she said, and nothing. I mean, is God listening to me? Am I doing something wrong, she asked. I mean, I'm starting to wonder if prayer is even 
works. Had Bartimaeus asked those same questions and given in to that kind of doubt, he would never have received his gift of sight. Or maybe he did think those things, but he shook them off. He got back up and continued his pursuit with such deep faith and conviction. Perseverance, friends, fortitude, keep knocking, keep knocking. That's the first point. The second point of this gospel is something probably it didn't even click when you heard it. Your faith has saved you, Jesus said to Bartimaeus as he departed. And I think we oftentimes hear this gospel as the blind man came to Jesus, Jesus healed him, and then Jesus says, go your way now, your faith has cured you. Because of your faith, you got this miracle. But that's not it. Jesus says, your faith has saved you. And this isn't the first time we've heard this from Jesus when he does a miracle. Remember the 10 lepers who were cured by Jesus? And then the one who came back to say thank you? And what does Jesus say to him? Thank you. Now go your way. Your faith has saved you. Or the woman who experienced the miraculous hand of Jesus in her life, and she departs from Jesus, and he says the same thing. Your faith has saved you, not cured you. In each of these cases, the reward and the blessing that Jesus gave to the person was not the physical healing they asked for, the prayer they asked for, but rather something much greater. I mean, it wasn't the, the temporary happiness of being physically healed or like Bartimaeus being able to see. Rather, what they received from Jesus was the eternal happiness of life with him forever. Salvation, heaven. <laughs> That's what it means. Your deep faith, you're going to receive the best gift of all. It's saved you. Their impressive belief and faith in Jesus was rewarded. That's what being saved means. It's the very goal of our faith, is it not? The desire of each of us, more than anything else, I think, I hope. So friends, I think it's a powerful reminder that this short, brief time on earth we have is just an interlude, the, the training ground, if you will, to make it to the finish line. We've been given this time to kind of prove our worth, really, to, to nourish our faith, to get to that finish line, despite all the forces trying to pull us away, to break us down, to push us under. But let's be clear and remember, this is not all there is, this life. There is that line we want to cross, and that's the most important. You know, Father Gilo, last week in his reflection, mentioned the Baltimore Catechism. And you remember that? You, I know us old people do. <laughs> if you're under, what, 35 or something, you have no idea. But the first and most important question in the Baltimore Catechism is maybe you remember, why did God make you? And we, it says the answer, to serve and love God in this life so that we can be with him forever in the next to serve and love God in this life so that we can reach that finish line and be with him forever. That's it. That's the singular goal and the whole point of this life, to get to heaven, the finish line. And that is what Jesus came to help us with and show us the way. I mean, yes, his miracles brought immediate happiness to those whose faith deserved it, but that wasn't the point. Jesus was always focused on heaven, salvation, 
which is so much more important than being able to see or being cured of disease. That was just the sprinkle on the cake of salvation. Jesus was always focused on that bigger picture. Persistence and the finish line. Friends, one gets us to the other. And it makes me think, I'm ending here, but it makes me think, when is the last time you prayed to get to heaven? I mean, no doubt we pray for things all the time in this life, financial stability, you know, health, healing for ourselves or someone we love, good weather, you know, a safe trip, hit the lottery, <laughs> and, and on and on, as we should. God asks us to do that. But let's not forget the greatest miracle, the greatest reward in faith that is so much bigger and more important than anything we could ask for in this life. And that, my friends, is the prayer God is praying for you. Thanks for joining me today, friends. Hey, and just a heads up, tomorrow is the last day for you to submit the picture and name of someone that you might have lost this year that you would like for us to bring to our altar for our special All Souls Mass, November 2nd. So please go to our website or our app blog. Just tap on All Souls Mass collage and you'll get the information there in the links. It's a beautiful, beautiful way to lift up our brothers and sisters. All right, well, thank you again for being with me. May God's blessing go with you today. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. We'll see you tomorrow in prayer. Have a beautiful day.